Hello and welcome to World Have Your Say. A tumultuous week in Iran has come to an end and there's been no story that you've wanted to talk about more since the crisis started with the election results last weekend. But how do we get to the truth of this story? One issue that many of you raise is the Western media. Has it been too fast to give credence to opposition accusations and to protesters' reports sent via Twitter and Facebook? And then on the other side, should the BBC and others be doing more to get around the reporting restrictions imposed by the Iranian authorities? As well as that, you're reacting to Ayatollah Khomeini's speech earlier. Saman in Tehran writes that he hasn't left us any room. They intend to make more martyrs out of our loved ones. And this just in from Fahad in Lahore. He posts, yes, that's the way to deal with such design drama against the stable Islamic Republic. Well, over the next half an hour, we'll speak to Iranians inside and outside of their country about these and many other issues. And wherever you're watching, of course, you're very welcome to take part. Here is how to get in touch. You can get in touch with us in several ways by the blog at worldhaveyoursay.com, by emailing worldhaveyoursay at bbc.com. If you've got your cell phone, text us on country code 4477862080, or you can call us up, country code 442070 well, we have a number of guests to speak with you on today's World Have Your Say. We're going to speak to Dariush, who's a Farsi blogger, has been for many years. He'll be talking to us in just a moment. We've also got Kevin Anderson, who is going to be joining us also in just a moment. He's head of the Guardian's blogging service. And we're going to be speaking to Pune Gadusi from the BBC's Persian television service. But before we bring all of them in, let me introduce you to our three guests here in the World Have Your Say studio. We have Issa, Mariam and Sarah. Great to have you all here. You're Iranians who live in the UK. Mariam, let me start with you. Where do you get reliable news about what's happening in Iran at the moment? Mostly I would perhaps uh, use the media online uh, and especially the non-established uh, organizations. I would uh, perhaps turn to um, different uh, variety of, of online news, um, I would say. Lots of people are emailing the BBC this week saying it's part of an agenda on the part of Western media to get President Ahmadinejad out of office. Do you buy into that? I had a feeling, especially from the day that the announcement of the result of the elections came, I had a feeling that not just the BBC, especially Fox and uh, CNN and the rest of Western media to only concentrate on their own favorite uh, co opposite candidate and started actually to, to um, contribute towards the escalation of the violence which which actually I think the role of the media should in a democratic society should be completely um, balanced and actually they did very little uh, of the other side the celebration well, okay, there's, of there's 20 two issues there though you're saying that one the, the information isn't necessarily reliable Two, it may actually be stoking violence in terror on how the Western media is reporting it let's put those points to Darius you're a Farsi blogger uh, you spend a great deal of time online using Facebook, Twitter and so on. Do you think there's a danger that those services and the Western media may actually be encouraging problems in your country's capital? Uh, I think that is, that is an, an entirely unfounded uh, uh, claim that, that uh, the, 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 the media has been actually contributing to the escalation of tensions or violence in particular. Yes, it is absolutely true that the Facebook and the Twitter and friend feed, uh, friend feed and, and everything available on the web have been actually capable of reflecting all these things is actually leaking the information out to the world because there are videos there are pictures and these pictures and videos are exactly the pictures and videos of security forces in the besieged militia committing crimes and violations of, uh, of, of even the rules and regulations which are respected within the constitution of the Islamic Republic but of Darish, Iran. Let me jump in here and ask you how can you be sure what you're receiving when you receive a tweet or a Facebook message? How can you be sure that the person who's sending that to you isn't just making it up for effect? Well, you cannot make up a video as such because when you see somebody from a rooftop shooting at people who are actually uh, 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 making their demonstrations in a non-violent way and they're walking and there is, there, is no, there is no clash between them and somebody is shooting at them, that is not something that could be denied. I mean, that doesn't have anything to do with the, with the Western media. I mean, talking about BBC or anything like that, a B, uh, the uh, BBC could be funded by somebody, but mm -hmm. you cannot say that Twitter is funded by somebody or the Internet is funded, funded by somebody. People sit in their own homes and, they, and, and they, they actually send out the videos that they have taken with their mm -hmm. own mobile phones in the streets. There okay. is no BBC media out there. So, so, so there is absolutely 
say that, well, this is, this is something which cannot be accurate. Okay, you you, you make your rely. point strongly, Dariush. Aisa and Sarah, I want to come to you in just a moment. But first, before we do that, let's bring in Pune Gadusi, who's a host of an equivalent show of World Have Your Say on BBC Persian Television. Pune, I'm sure this week has been busier than most for BBC Persian Television. When you're getting all this information from people in Iran, how do you sift what you think is true and what may be fiction? It has become more and more difficult. The less reliable information we have from inside the country, from Iranian or foreign news agencies, the less pictures uh, we are allowed to use and allowed to receive, because now we are limited and uh, we're not even allowed to get pictures from Reuters and APTN anymore. We are left with really what's coming from the people most of the time right now. And some of them are really harrowing images. And uh, there are demonstrations. There's been shooting. There's been beating up of people. Uh, it is true that sometimes it's difficult to differentiate the decoy ones or the unrealistic ones or the fabricated ones from the truthful ones. But then uh, when you receive 10 different images of one a specific incident of, for example, beating up of a woman in the demonstrations, then you're sure that it's a true one. Also, in some of the images, you really have to be Steven Spielberg to, able, to be able to make up those uh, on Photoshop if and you want to do them And one recurring accusation sent, to, I'm sure, to you and to us on the English language BBC services is that it's only a certain type of Iranian getting in touch with us. It's only a certain type of Iranian urban well-off, middle-class, English-speaking, who is sharing their experiences. Is that true in your experience? It is not really true. First of all, uh, Mr. Ahmadinejad's are very tech-savvy, just as much as Mr. Musavi's or Mr. Karoubi's camp, the activist ones inside, both and outside the country. They've been contacting our program. They've been talking to us. They've been telling us their opinions, uh, mostly before the uh, election and the announcement of the results. But even after that, who were supporting Mr. Ahmadinejad coming on the show and strongly defending his views or um, the legitimacy the, uh, of the elections and the countings. But um, it is true, you might say people in the towns, smaller towns and villages, do not have access to Twitter or Facebook, but then they do not have access to anything else left in the country except the state media, which we know does not really reflect the whole truth and all of it. Pune, very good to have you on the program. We can see Kevin Anderson from The Guardian is joining us on the screen. We'll speak to you in a moment, Kevin. And Issa, I know you've got strong views on how well the rest of the media, the Western media, is getting outside of Tehran. But before all of that, World Have Your Say isn't just, um, World Have Your Say isn't just a, a show on the television or on the radio. We have discussions 24 hours a day online. Let's go to Fiona Crack, who's monitoring all of your messages as they're coming in. This is from Alby on the World Have Your Say blog. He says, social media is the bastion of a global elite. That is clear and not democratic. They probably don't represent the Iranian people as a whole or any people as a whole. San Salim is following us on Twitter. New media sources are too one-sided. There is too much hype, not enough to confirm the difference between a rumor and reality. And Judici is also cheating, tweeting, sorry. He says, I trust the international media. I think they're analyzing the situation well. And this from the blog, from Mir in Israel. Clearly, there is a torrent of bad feeling over the elections in Iran. And there's more than enough signs that something is rotten. At the same time, foreign news agencies should examine more carefully if what they are reporting really reflects the mood of the country. There's lots of ways to keep in touch. One of them is Twitter. Go to the front page, type in World Have Your Say, and you will find us there. OK, well, let's bring in Issa, because I said I would just a moment ago. Uh, there's been much made this week in discussions of the election crisis in Iran, that Tehran is not the rest of the country, and the Western media doesn't understand that. Do you agree with that? Um, yeah, I do. And I'd like to first take up the point made by Darush that uh, the attack on the Besiji, uh, the demonstration at the Besiji base was peaceful. First of all, they tried to uh, set fire to the besieged base and break in. They fired warning shots into the air. When this wasn't heeded, then unfortunately, and um, it was a, dis a disgraceful shame that some people did die. However, to call that attack peaceful is OK, but this is interesting, wrong. though, because we, we can't go into the details here because there's really no way of clearing it up. And one of the reasons there's no way of clearing it up is because there's such restrictions on reporters in Iran, isn't there? Don't you agree? That makes it hard for us to get the truth. Well, that's what I exactly wanted to say. His point or Darius's point, they are 
both coming out based on a video.